Hi guys, welcome to Jetfish TV. My name is Kirk Davis and this is a brand new format of fishing show where we not only have awesome fishing content, we also have live guests right here in studio before and after each episode every week. Every Thursday evening for the next two months, I'll be sitting right here with a number of different guests from within the industry that we all love to give you guys more information about where to fish, how to fish, and what gear I use to catch the fish. As a live show, you can ask questions as we go, so don't be shy, as well as be in the running for some awesome prizes. Tonight, we're lucky enough to have Ocean Angler contributor Michael Walkley here with us to help launch the show and to chat through with everyone anything you'd like to know. Welcome, mate. Mate, what a pleasure. How good is this? I, I know. Uh, it's been a... A long time coming, yeah. but it's a, it's a pleasure to have you on the couch representing Ocean Angler here tonight. Oh man, it's a pleasure to be here. Like, this looks amazing. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be cool. We've got some awesome content, uh, which we're going to look at shortly, actually. But before we start chatting to Mike all night, let's have a look at the awesome prizes that I just mentioned that are up for grabs. We've got about four grand worth of cool prizes in our prize cupboard. And each week, during the episodes, we'll be giving them away to you guys. We've got all sorts of stuff. We have got some drink bottles. We have got some hats. We've got some soft baits. We have got spools of Daiwa braid. We've got spools of Daiwa fluorocarbon. We have got t-shirts. We've got pliers. We've got all sorts of other bits and pieces that we can give away to you guys. In addition to that, we have a major prize, as if that wasn't enough. The winner of the major prize draw is going to win a Daiwa KIX LT3000 reel with 300 metres of J-Braid. They're going to win a Daiwa TD Black Macker 7-foot soft bait rod. They're going to... They're gonna, um, win a Lawrence Hook 7 Split Shot Sounder GPS, two Yamaha life jackets, two Yamaha caps, plus a Yamaha, a Yamaha grab bag to carry all that loot in. Now you might wonder why you need two Yamaha life jackets or two Yamaha caps. It's because the winner gets to bring a mate out for a day fishing and that winner is going to be on his own ski for the day. So Farnley's Yamaha are providing two skis for the day. You don't get to keep them, but you get them for the day, and you get to come out fishing with me. I'll take you somewhere out in the Gulf in Auckland. All you need to do is make your own way to Auckland, and I'll get you into jet ski fishing if you've never been in, never jet ski fished before. I'll show you the ropes. We'll go through how it's all done. And I mean, you're going to be pretty excited by the time you've seen this series, I tell you, because there is some wicked stuff that you can do on a ski, and we'll just fish to your heart's content. Can I enter? Yeah, I don't see why not, mate. Is it awkward if I win? Well, I mean, it'll be drawn under supervision, so that that's a that's a reasonable question. The prize Can will I be drawn it? under supervision, so unsupervisable. Well, I'm not sure you're supervisable. <laughs> okay, so the question is that you guys all want to know, right? And and obviously Mike wants to know as well is how do we win those prizes? All you need to do to be in to win is to tag a mate or mates, as many as you want, on this live broadcast page. Plus, you have to make sure that you have liked the Jetfish TV page, right? So the Jetfish TV page on Facebook, you just go there and click the like button on that. For an extra entry, you can also like Jetfish TV on Instagram. Just search Jetfish TV on Instagram and you'll find them. The more times you do that, the more entries you've got in the draw for all that stuff. Um, so come back every week, obviously. I mean, you don't want to miss it every week anyway. There's going to be some pretty wicked content in there. Um, and in addition to that main prize, we'll be giving away some random weekly giveaways of prizes right here live. So we'll run little competitions like as we're talking like this, and we'll run that live. Um, we might ask you a question about something you've just watched, we might ask you where you're catching your fish, what colour soft bait your lure is, 
what your what your favorite lure is, whatever, you know, anything like that could be a question for you. All you've got to do is comment, and then we'll pick a winner live. All right, so remember, this is just a promo show tonight, right? This is to tell you all about it, to introduce you to, um, to where we're at. So we're going to come back to some of the comments shortly. But remember that right now, or next week actually, next week, 8 o'clock, right here on the Ocean Angler platform, we're going to bring you the first ever episode of Jetfish TV, which will really shows you what the Wave Runner is capable of. To whet your appetite, we've got a few highlights of a few episodes coming up for you. So check out now some brief highlights of the first episode. Welcome to Jetfish. My name's Kirk Davis, and this is my show where I take you to meet some pretty cool people in some pretty cool places and have some pretty cool fishing experiences. And I do it all on a wave runner. In this episode, I travel to the beautiful Great Barrier Island where I'm on a mothership trip and I have a whale of a time. Oh, yep, fish on. Oh, nice fish. Oh, nice fish. Big fish, big fish. Yeah. In addition to some fantastic fishing, I also take the time to show you guys the gear I use and how to use it most effectively. One of the things I love to do on the Wave Runner is explore my location, so I show you some nooks and crannies you would never get into in a boat before having what can only be described as an experience of a lifetime. So that is the first episode that we're going to see next week. And in that, in that show is some wicked content. There's some heaps of good fishing. There is heaps of good... Great Barrier is one of those places where it's a... The, the destination is also the journey and it's also the adventure, you know, and there's so much stuff there. I love Great Barrier. Have you done much fishing there? Not enough. I mean, I, I've loved the place. I've been there a couple of times, done a wee bit of, you know, exploring around, but just, ha yeah, it's one of those places that you can just keep kind of going back to and finding something new, you know. It's, yeah. it's a mecca. It's wicked. You, you'll see when we go there, when we look at the, the full episode last week, uh, last week, <laughs> next week, when we have a look at the new episode next week, we're going to see that there is so many cool little harbours in there and cool little beaches. And there's this wicked beach we pull into and we smoke some fish and we yeah. have a barbecue. And man, it, it is just wicked. And as a, as a destination... It is, it is one of the nicest places, if not the nicest place in the Gulf. And I love going there. There's, there's heaps of shelter as well. But regardless of which way the wind's going, you can just make your way around the island. And the, the Wave Runner is perfect for that, you know? Yeah, you're always going to find some form of shelter, aren't you? Exactly. You can just cruise around the island. You can keep in close. You can go out wide or whatever. You, you tailor the, the trip to your conditions. Should we just have a look and see if anybody, I can't see anybody who's asking any specific questions just yet. So um, what we'll do now is the, we'll look at uh, some highlights of another episode. One that, in terms of a destination, for me, is very similar to the barrier, oh, yeah. but completely different. You know, and this, polar. It's, mm. it's, it's beautiful. Mike and I have fished this destination a lot. It's the, it's the far north, yeah. and we've fished there together a few times now. We've been on a few trips um, I think it's probably where we met. Actually, yeah, was yeah, on it was one of these. Session up there. Yep, was on one of these trips, and uh, it the, the place is just absolutely incredible. You'll see from the footage that we get that we're about to see in these highlights that the fishing can be insane, the the scenery can be insane, the the people. They're not insane, but they are lovely. <laughs> well, <laughs> probably some of them are insane, but yeah. certainly the people that I've had the privilege of meeting up there. And I'm quite close with some people up there now, and it's just a different place. So yeah, I I love it up there. I, I call it my spiritual home. You oh, know, yeah, absolutely. It just you go there, and it's just a different pace, a different way of life. So let's have a look now at the far north episode. This week on Jetfish, I've hooked on the Wave Runner, and I'm heading to the very far north of New Zealand to fish from land and sea. I've been lucky enough to be invited to the local oyster farm to see how that works before being dropped off on a remote inner harbour ledge to fish with top catch bait and burley. The squid is so moist and they love it.
I then head out of the harbour on the Wave Runner and show you guys some tips and tactics to catch some beautiful fish in this equally beautiful clear water. I use a variety of soft baits and techniques to catch a variety of fish before shit gets real. Here we go, touch up. Fish on! Nice fish! Rightio, a mouthful of beer. <laughs> Perfect timing. <laughs> You've got to be ready for these things. Now, obviously, like this is a whole new concept, right? This type of broadcast of a fishing show. It's a whole new concept for everyone. So if stuff goes wrong, stuff's going to go wrong. But it's a bit like fishing at times, you know I mean? Had a miss. How, how often do we go fishing and nothing goes wrong or you don't lose some gear? or well, if, no, People don't know about it, though. That's the thing. People are going to know about this one, Kate. Well, yeah. I mean, and that's the thing, right? It's, it's a boots and all fishing show. Normally, if you're filming a fishing show... You go out there and you could spend three days filming a 20-minute segment and it looks like you've done it all in a day, right? Some of these guys have got the budget to do that. But this show is more of a boots and all show. It's it's live right here. So whatever whatever's happening here is what's happening, oh, yeah. right? But yeah, okay, so back to the far north. Um, few, a few Northlanders there commenting that maybe the Jaffas shouldn't head past the Brindurwins, but mm. I'm not sure... You know, I, I mean that that's good advice, but yeah. you know the country's there to be enjoyed. Oh, that's it, and sustainably enjoyed. And that's that's a big thing, right? So I mentioned it at the start. Like one of the ways that I fish is is um, I fish for tomorrow. That yeah. that's my my motto, my mantra. I fish for tomorrow. I look after myself. I look after the people I've got with me, and I look after the fish. So if I'm fishing in an area that's where I'm getting sharked, if I get sharked once. You know, time to go. Pretty much, you know, yeah. if, if especially when you're jigging, if you're jigging for kingfish and you get sharked once, you it, sometimes you might be all right. Get sharked twice, you're gone. You know, I'm yeah. not going to sit there fishing and trying to get a, a kingfish in when it, it's you're just feeding the sharks. Ex that, mate. Exactly. Yeah, you're doing more damage than good, really. Exactly. I mean, mm -hmm. your legal limit is is three a day for kingfish anyway, right? So, mm -hmm. my my theory is if you hit, if you kill three fish by yeah. A shark killing it when you knew that that shark was probably going to get it. That's that's your limit done yeah. and dusted. You go home, you go fish for something else. There we go. So yeah, so from there we go. I wasn't quite done with the far north yet actually, and I wanted to film another episode there. That's how much I loved it. So I thought I would get the bait out and really put an, uh, a session in on the bait. So this next set of highlights you're going to see. For, a few, for an upcoming episode, is fishing in the harbour, off the land, using the ski to get there. And that's the beauty of the ski, you know, you oh. can just pull it up anywhere, little beaches, little the sand. The accessibility of it, isn't it? Exactly. Mm. And the harbours in the far north, so beautiful, so sheltered. Pull up on the beach and start fishing some land base. So check this one out. In this episode, I continue my journey in the far north of New Zealand and show you how to rig some of Top Catch's finest baits. We look at the gear used for land-based fishing in the harbour, as well as how to rig a freshly caught live bait to catch something bigger. I give you a close look at the rods, reels and other gear I use to fish from these beautiful far north beaches, and have an absolutely frantic session of fishing. Here we go. Fish on. Yep. Fish on. Oh, wow, we've got a fish on over here. Oh. This is a big fish. Oh, oh, oh. I tell you what, that show had so many reels screaming like your nana that you cannot keep up. I'm telling you. <laughs> Just like your nana. Just like your nana, mate. Like I'm I'm telling you, like some days you get those days where you're fishing and every time you put a rod down, something kicks in. That day was like that. Every time I hooked up on one rod, the other rod would hook up at the same time. And when it's just me fishing, That's a bit hard. it turns oh. to bedlam. I mean, how clear was that water, though? That's oh, gin clear. I know. Oh, that's beautiful. That's everyone's dream, man. I know. I mean, you can just get some beautiful footage. And I mean, all through the all through the episodes, you guys will, will get to see some 
quality footage like that. You know, our, our underwater cameraman, Mario, Mario Gladsky, oh, yeah, yeah, is yeah. our underwater cameraman. He does get some fantastic shots. And yeah, I mean, it's just, just fantastic. If you guys have got any questions, feel free to ask them, right? Because we might give away a little prize soon to someone who asks the best question, maybe. Most absurd. You know? Yeah, well, most absurd, whatever. You know, we've got some, we've got a Yamaha hat to give away, so get asking some questions. Um, and make sure that you, you know, are watching, enjoying. If, you, if you've if you got something you want to see, let us know. Paul wants us to say hi to his kids, so hi, Paul's kids. Paul couldn't make it tonight. He's nearly got another baby. Unlucky. Yeah, he's nearly got another baby on the way. So, um, yeah, he couldn't make it tonight. He won't be able to make it next week. So next week, though, talking about guests on the couch, um Next week, we've got Mark Kitteridge coming from Ocean Angler. He's going to be coming in to talk about that one, to talk about soft baiting. There's a lot of soft baiting in that um, Great Barrier episode. And so we teach you all sorts of things about how to rig your soft bait. Excellent. Yeah. Like, do you find, how do you find rigging a soft bait? Have you, have you changed the way you rig it over the years? Yeah. Well, it really depends on the bait. I mean... You get the uh, the jerk shads and stuff like that. They have the slot in the middle that yep. yeah you rig it differently to as you would a grub. Yep. But um yeah, it, it all kind of adapts and changes as you know jig heads change and all that kind of jazz. You know, it's it's ever evolving really, isn't it? Exactly, and I mean that, and that's what we look at. We look at particularly how to rig, probably the most popular style of, mm. of soft bait, which is the, the jerk shad. The, style. the jerk shad, and then the beauty of coming into here afterwards is that if you guys want to see us rig any other type of soft baits, we can do that. We can do that live on camera here. If you want to see us how to tie some knots, how to do whatever, that's entirely up to you. So just let us know what you want to see. Um, even now, let us know what you want to see in next week's episode. If you're into soft baiting or you're new to soft baiting, let us know what you want to see there because we can prepare for that. We can have some stuff to, uh, for you to see. Okay, so we'll move on. We'll look at some more highlights. Uh, the next set of highlights we're going to look at is it goes back to one of my passions again around sustainability and this is uh, a kids competition that I run, a sustainable competition. So uh, let's have a look at those highlights now. This week on Jetfish I'm in the beautiful sleepy town of Matarangi, about three hours from Auckland where my family and I come every summer for our summer holidays. I've been running a kids fishing competition here off the wharf every Christmas for years and this year one lucky kid gets to come out on the wave runner with me to catch the fish of a lifetime. Okay guys lines in, we'll head on up, head on up to prize giving, let's have a look at what everybody's caught, get some prizes. And that person who caught a 31.5 centimetre car wire is Lewis. Hold on mate. With good weather and the prospect of nice fish we decide to head very wide to Kuvia Island to hunt something big. Lewis was a sponge for all the information I gave him about how to read the Laurent sounder and how to fight large fish. Oh yeah boy! And it doesn't take long for him to get in on the action. How good is it to uh, yeah, get the kids out there doing it with you, eh? I oh, know, I, like, I love it. I, yeah. No, seriously, I mean, I've had my daughter out fishing with me since she was two. She absolutely loves it. Yeah, and it's always, Dad, can we take out the boat? Yeah, and that's the passion that we really want to yeah, push onto our kids to yeah, get out there and do what we really enjoy. And obviously, you've done that with them. Yeah, I mean, that, that competition I've run down at Matarangi for a long time. And uh, it's it's a sustainable comp. So we run it off the wharf, but it's a measure and release comp. Most competitions, especially kids' competitions, they will catch the sprats and little car wine and stuff off the wharf, in. chuck them in a chuck them in a bucket, mm -hmm. they'll all go warm and then they'll chuck them in a bin, right? Yeah. So all those fish have died for no reason. Mm -hmm. This competition is all about getting that fish in, measuring it, and then it's the angler's choice to either release it or if they want to keep it for bait or they want to eat it then they do that. But we teach them about that. We teach them about, well, you know what, a car wide, when you get to a 30 centimetre car wide, that's enough to eat, you oh, know? Yeah. 
or it's it's good enough to use for bait. But if you're catching a little sprat and you're not going to use it for bait, why kill it, you know? Well, that's it. Get the memory and then release it. I mean, I get a lot from releasing fish these days. Oh, I mean, I get more of I get more of a buzz now from catching and releasing a fish or being or helping someone else catch mm. and release a fish. Yeah, putting someone onto fish is a big thing for me. Exactly. You know, it's it's just so wicked and to be able to do that to a whole, you know, 80 kids or something come to that competition every every year on the wharf and to be able to do that and then to reward one of them for doing that is is pretty cool and and that show is is wicked you know to to get to take a kid the distance we took him out to Cuvier Island now that how good is that I've been to Cuvier I know a massive trip but the weather the weather came right and he was just all over it you know he just absolutely loved it and you'll see in the show great for your kids to watch because it it shows I teach him from he he had very little angling skill with no no disrespect to Lewis and he'll, he'll be watching the show when it's on but he had very little angling skill when when we started, and it's very clear in the episode. To right to the end, it, he just he changes just completely, it. and that's that's what I just love to see with uh, with with fishing, you know. So we'll we'll check a few questions now. So we'll go to um, Garth asked a question: Is your show only going to be on here or on TV also? So it's we have decided to just put it on this platform. The beauty of this platform is is that you guys can watch it again and again. It's it's on at a, at a specified time, just like TV, but it gives us the ability to put it where we want it to go. It's global. Exactly. Well, it, it's global, but for all our New Zealand viewers, and the majority of people are going to be New Zealand viewers, yep. but it's it's how people are watching entertaining content now, right? We, hardly anyone watches TV. Yeah, I know that. You know? TV's going and you're still in front of your phone, aren't you? E- exactly. You're still in front of your phone, a notification pops up, or you're... You want to watch it when yeah. you want to watch it. And the beauty Absolutely. of this is you can go back and watch this anytime. You can comment on it anytime. You can share it when you want it anytime. So that's how we're going to roll with that, right? Next question. Are the shows a mix of stink bait and jigs and soft baits? They're a mix of everything. So I do a lot of, and Mike's the same, a lot of soft baiting, metal jigs, um, metal lures, that type of thing. I mean, that's my passion. But I also love live baiting. Live baiting's cool. Live baiting's good. Dirty bait. Mm, that, that you can keep that one. Yeah. I mean, I I like a good dirty bait session, and you'll see in those far north uh, trips, particularly in the harbour. I I just love to get down and dirty with a uh, bit of squid. You know. Yeah, that's all you, mate. <laughs> you know, I mean, Mike's Mike's the squid man. You would have seen him on the on the Ocean Angler page recently, catching squid. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's a he's a squid master, and I've said to him, you know, we need to go out for a trip. But now we do. Yeah, I mean, Mike can catch it. I like to use it as bait. I love to eat it actually. So, oh, yeah. save some for the uh, for the table, and you can keep the rest, and you can do what you want with it. I'll just close my eyes, mate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I mean, that that type of stuff's cool. Um, what's my most successful Z-Man? Um, that's a good question. So I personally love. The old favourite, which is the um, bruise banana, right? Mm. So the bruise banana, seven inch bruise banana, is my favourite. And like um, I used to only use five inch. Yeah. And so what what size do you use? Yeah, I'm all about the sevens to be fair. Um, and yet again, those contrasting colours, blue water. Yep. I use the atomic sunrise. Yeah, orange jig stands out. Yep. They seem to like it. Yep. And yeah. we'll we'll see some advice in the next show next week. When we go to Great Barrier and do a lot of soft baiting, there's a lot of stuff in there about when I use what soft baits, what colours, what sizes, what size jig heads, because it all makes a big difference, right? But if we're talking about what my favourites are, my favourites, there's a few. There is the bruised banana. There is the... Um, motor oil. The motor oil is probably my second favourite. Yeah. It took a while to win me over on that one. I didn't use it for a while, and then I went for a far north trip. And, uh, yeah, when you get a... 17 pound snapper on your second cast of the day it's it's hard to turn down that for the rest of the day you know (laughs) but yeah and then the um it's like the boys all rave about the coconut ice yeah i mean i've never had i've never used that one i can't bring myself to either no (laughs) but the boys rave about it andre absolutely raves about it yeah so hey there's got to be something in it yep and there's the what's that new newer blue one the uh oh bluegill is it that one? Uh, that one over there, actually. Oh, Show. Fusilier. The Fusilier. Yeah, bring it over. Yeah, I'll bring it over. Yeah, if you, I mean, how much does that look like a Koei? 
Exactly. Mm. And that's so that's exactly why I like it, right? So we haven't got the camera set up to do the close up. We'll have that when we get into the proper shows. But um, this green and blue Fusilier is an awesome soft bait, right? So it's uh, where are we? we it, are. It's like when you when you're in the far north, particularly is where I love to use it. It's it's like a, a kahuru. Mm. So love that one. Um, but yeah, I'll give anything a try. Really, usually don't say that too quickly, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give any softie a try, <laughs> yeah. but um, I love the seven inch. You know that that's probably the standout. Like for years and years and years, I wouldn't I wouldn't go near a seven inch because I'd be like, oh, you know, the, the smaller snapper can't get it. But they will. Reality is, I don't really want a thirty centimeter snapper. You know, I want the perfect eating size. If I'm fishing for eating size snapper, is thirty five to forty five for yeah. me. You know, that's the perfect little fish, fish fingers, as Paul calls them. Yeah, good. Fingers. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, so beautiful, you know. So um, yeah, it's you're going to see heaps of stuff. That that's really the takeaway right now is um, is is that that there's going to be so many different content. There's there's heaps and heaps of different varied um, content that mm -hmm. we're going to go for. Right. Uh, let's have a look through some other comments. Any night fishing on the show to come? Um, Chris asks, that's a good question, Chris. Um, night fishing, Mike and I were talking about it earlier, actually, mm. in terms of c could we film some night fishing for squid. It's, we, it's, it. we can give it a crack. It's hard to film mm. night fishing. That's the issue. I might play a little bit of behind-the-scenes um, footage mm. from an Australian trip, um, which we've got coming up soon. You'll see some highlights of that soon. Um where we stayed on a mothership and we fished overnight and the boat was just surrounded by millions and millions of bait fish with this massive shadow the size of a boat going around underneath it to scatter them. White pointer. Yeah. Uh, Surely. Very, very big fish, mm -hmm. right? Um so yeah, we we may we may look at that as well, right? There's it's it just gets a bit tricky to film at night, but it can be done. Right. So um we'll come back to some more questions in a minute. We'll have a look at a little bit more highlights of some, some additional content now. Uh, and this one is something a lot different from fishing above the water. And it's fishing below the water and seeing how the fish act, react, interact in their own environment. So check this one out. Today I'm doing something a little different. I'm heading out with Jackson Shields from Wessie, one of New Zealand's top free divers and spearfishers. Heading out on the wave runner to the head and chicks, where he's going to show me what the fish look like and how they behave in their own environment. Normally, I'm looking at them from the sounder and I'm trying to catch them on the line. Today, I'm going to observe them. I'm going to try and shoot a couple, see if we can't get something for dinner, and maybe something a little different for dinner, something a little different than I normally catch on the ski as well as who knows what else. We get to see a wide range of fish in this episode. Some are very familiar, yet sometimes elusive to us all. And others are not so commonly caught. One thing's for certain, and that's these boys know how to find the fish. Jacko and Danimal are wizards under the water, with or without the spear. You will not believe the adventure we have. So that was kind of my introduction to spearfishing, having a look at fish underwater, um, and it, it's a real different way to appreciate the way the fish live, you know, like, I always, when I go fishing, I'm like, right, I need to think like a fish. Where would I be if I was a, if I was a big snapper? And getting in the water is a great way of working that out. Oh, yeah. Do you do a bit of free diving? Um, yes and no. I mean, I'm not going to say I'm anything more than a novice. I mean, I enjoy it, absolutely. Um, when I get the opportunity to do so, chuck on my gear and I go for a dive. I mean, how was that when we went up north? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're chuckling because we... Um, we were in Hohora, and there was a few John Dory around. And Mike was like, "Yep, yeah, I'm going to jump in there, and I'm going to spear one. It's like, yeah, that's cool. So we sat on the 
on the wharf and had a lemonade while Mike swam around mm. in the uh, in the <laughs> in the water. And next thing, this massive stingray comes. Thing was huge. Yeah, this <laughs> massive stingray comes hooping through, and Mike's like, "Whoa!" And he's, he's legs are in the air. Yeah, yeah, you've never seen anyone swim so fast. And then he got out. And a big bloody uh, the big bronzy showed bronzy, up. Bronzy, two that. big bronzies showed up. Like these things were. One of them must have been what eight feet Ooh, at least. Yeah, eight eight plus feet long. Yeah, and I didn't get back in the water after that. <laughs> <laughs> that was the last time that we saw. Uh, we saw, saw me in a wetsuit. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So we have a look at a couple of questions. Um, why do you use a Yamaha over other brands? Ross asks. That's a good question, Ross. Um, I have used a Yamaha Wave Runner now for a long, long, long time. And I've used, it's not that I've only ever had one, I've had all the brands. I've had a Kawasaki, I've had a Sea-Doo, I've had a Yamaha. And obviously Yamaha support me to to make this show, which is great. And you know that's part of the reason why I use one, but it's not the only reason. I wouldn't be going the places that I go if I wasn't confident in the ski. And, and the Yamaha brand is all about having... Is all about being confident yeah. in your equipment, right? And I'm I'm confident that I can go a long, long way. I mean, you've already seen the highlights. I've been to Kuvia and back from Matarangi, which is a that, that's a big trip. I've been to Great Barrier and back from uh, Beachlands, hmm. right? That's a, a that's a hike, man. That's a massive hike. That's about a hundred and something kilometres each way, right? And sure, I had a I had a um, mothership there with me, but I, you know, I go on trips similar to that by myself. I mean, well, I take North Cape runs. North Cape, yep. I mean, all those things. We go, we've been. Mike and I have been to North Cape. He's been in his boat in his in his FC, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm on my ski and you know, round North Cape. Man, what good sessions we've had, man! Oh. And the distance you've travelled on that ski, and you look comfortable. Exactly, more you comfortable know, than us. It is, and I mean, <laughs> to be fair, I I feel safer on a ski when the conditions get rough. Than in a small boat, you know. I think there's a, a kind of a point where I would rather be on a ski when they get a bit gnarly because you're like a cork in the ocean. Mm. Whereas on a boat, you've got that chance, I guess, of being swamped if your boat's small enough. Yeah. So you, you've got that crossover point. But I mean, Yamaha, very, very reliable, very, very fuel efficient, very, very stable. You know, you'll you'll see as we go along. You can stand on the side. There's heaps of storage. It's heaps of fuel um, efficiency. It only carries seventy liters, but I can do one hundred and sixty kilometers, which is a hundred nautical miles on a tank of gas. I've one trip once. I went from Matarangi. One coming up here. <laughs> oh no, not that one. <laughs> there was uh, not that time I did myself a mischief. But, <laughs> not that time. <laughs> um, I went from Matarangi right up the coast. Right up to um, inside Arid Island of Great Barrier, stayed on the on the beach the night, anchored the ski up, put a little tent just above high tide mark, stayed on the beach, got up at five o'clock in the morning, went out fishing, caught snapper up to like twenty pounds by nine o'clock, kept three I think Good. for dinner, and I was back at Matarangi on one tank of gas uh, by lunchtime, having a quiet lemonade. You know, How good is that? Exactly, and I and that was one tank of gas. That was I had like three liters left, and I know I had three liters left because I had to drain it. I was sending the ski overseas. I was going to Samoa to oh, do wow. some filming there a couple of few years back, and so I knew exactly how much gas I had. Now I didn't just go without spare gas. I actually had another forty-five spare liters of gas strapped on. So I will never just uh, yeah, I'll, I'll never just go on a whim. I'll mm. always have some spare gas somewhere. Yeah, like my boat. <laughs> yeah, like, like, yeah. That, that's a that's another story. But just be careful if you leave your spare gas on someone's boat because if they disappear, you can do yourself a mischief. Mm. Right. So let's just have a look. Have we got any um, any other good comments? So we've got. Have you ever got Ben Moretti says? Have you ever got a stingray or eels out fishing? And uh, yes. In a, in a word, I mean, you just you catch stingrays, right? And you may even see some in this series. Stingrays, sharks. Well, I've, I've felt hooked stingrays in the wings before and called them for big kings and all yeah. sorts, fighting for half an hour and have an eagle around the wing. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, you get one of those babies on light tackle. It's good fun. It's good fun. Mm. Yeah. And, and until you see it. Yeah. And then it's like you're Utter the... disappointed. Yeah. You're, you're yeah. like the most heartbroken angler you've ever seen. You know, it's like, oh, well, bloody stingray. And yeah. So, still respect them, though. 
Of course. I mean, it's a fish. Yeah. You know, you, you try and get the hook out if you can. You've got to be safe with stingrays. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, we'll have a look, I think, at one more set of highlights before we go tonight. I don't want to give uh, everything away before we get into the first episode next week. But let's go now and have a look at a little trip that I did with my son, Blake, to Australia. Blake and I have come over to Australia, to Harvey Bay, on what some people might call a father-son trip of a lifetime. Wind it, wind, 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 wind. Yeah, boy! Blake's on. We're going away on this big whale watching cat. It's the end of whale watching season. And we've got about seven or eight skis between 10 or 12 guys, as well as five kids. And we're all heading away up to Fraser Island, and we're going to be looking for all sorts of different pelagics. Up there at this time of year, you can get tuna, you can get uh, mackerel, spotted mackerel, Spanish mackerel, and of course the elusive black marlin. Fish on! This is what I've waited a long time for. See him out there, just below the water. So that was an awesome trip, and you've probably seen just from those highlights that um, there is some pretty cool stuff to come there, man. Yeah. Like, uh, you kept that one pretty quiet. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's I've had to keep that one under my hat for a while, actually. You know, it's it's hard when you go on these trips to keep those real awesome catches under the under the hat, you know, especially when they're when they're record catches. You know, you, you go and catch something that hardly anyone else has done in the world oh, and you, yeah. you can't really tell anyone about it until you, you broadcast. But that's the whole point of this now is that um, this content is going to start coming to you much faster. So when you film a TV show typically, you could have a year or more mm. from the time you film it to when it makes TV. The oh, point yeah. of this is, boom, we film it, we've got it on straight away. Um, and in that show, man, there is some... Big fish. Yeah, that, looks, that looks fantastic. Big fish caught from little boats, oh, man. Yeah. And in an in an epic environment, right? Oh, like dude. you saw some of those shots and it's just it's like the far north on steroids. Oh yeah. So yeah, so a couple more questions to have a look. Um so Paul Hayes asks, what sort of growth are you seeing in sales of PWCs for fishing? Uh, the reality is, Paul, is that when I first started doing this and I went to Yamaha um, and pitched a show for them, my first TV show that was six or seven years ago now, one out of every ten skis probably was for fishing. Now, I would hazard to say that one out of every ten skis isn't purchased mm -hmm. for fishing. You know, It's just amazing. People can see by getting this type of content out to them, it's it's amazing what you can do. You don't know what you don't know, right? And people, jet ski fishers or jet ski riders get called all sorts of names under the sun, you know. Can I say it? <laughs> you can say whatever. Homo chariot. Homo chariot, cyclist of the sea, right? You, you All sorts of names. But and, and to be fair, some of the jet ski riders who aren't jet ski fishermen kind of lend themselves to that name yeah. because they don't... They don't help themselves. They'll go out wearing a, a full face mask. They'll be doing... So you can't... There's no personality in the mm. person. You can't smile at someone away with them. They'll go past someone doing bloody 20 knots while they're trying to fish. But fortunately, the, the guys who fish off the skis, 99% of them have probably <laughs> fished before, had a boat before. Oh, absolutely. I know a lot of good buggers who ski fish now, and they do it out of personal preference. Exactly. You know, it just it's just... It's ease of launch... Mm launch by yourself ease of getting there it's nice and quick you know no, you don't have to rely on crew either that that's I mean, a i've got some shit crew oh like. wow i uh, i know your crew mate yeah. and i uh, mean i don't know how you fish with them to be honest mm. but you know. we try yeah <laughs> yeah i mean i do not know how you fish with cb that's for sure <laughs> but i mean I, I can't believe he doesn't try and take your fish oh you know? well he does yeah <laughs> so um Oh, I've forgotten even what we're talking about now. <laughs> so, um, anyway, let's have a look at another comment. Um, have you caught any three metery flatties? No, well, I haven't, but um, pretty close actually. And if you keep an eye on the Australian show, possibly not too far off. Will, 
I took Will, who's made this comment. We went out. Mike and I were in a pub actually in Hobor, yeah. and this this scruffy kid walks past on a Wednesday or something. Yeah, whenever it was, we were there. Rods attached to his bike. Yeah, rods on his bike, and he'd just been down the wharf, and he'd been fishing. And you know, we recognised who he was from Instagram and YouTube, and started chatting to him. And I said, "Oh, you want to come out on the ski tomorrow, mate?" Thinking, you know, school day tomorrow, so who uh, who probably won't want to come? And straight away, he's like, "Yep, I'm in." So I'm like, okay. Because everyone was away or something, wasn't it? Yeah, we were, uh, we, we'd all taken time yeah. off work to go there. Yeah, it was a work it, day. Yeah, it was a work day. It was yeah. a Wednesday or a Thursday, yeah. probably a Thursday. And he's like, yeah, 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 um, yeah, I'll be there. So sure enough, we met him down the wall, 5.30 in the morning, and up we went. We headed out to, where did we go? The well, initially, we patch? were going out to Garden the 355. Patch. We were going to go for deep drops, and you guys peeled off. Well, we went out. Will and I went there. We got to... Most of the way. Most of the way there, and we fished there. So you yeah. find all the tuna and stuff busting up on yeah, the way Yeah, we outside? found a few tuna busting up that we cast some stick baits at. We then headed right up to North Cape. I mean, this is on a ski, right? So we've yeah. headed, I don't know how far, must have been 20 miles out mm. to start with to get out to this deep spot where we were going to go for puka. Um, we lost the boys on the boat there. The boys on the boat had our fuel hmm. on this day. So and like, your lunch. Uh, fuel and lunch. So we're like, right, Aaron, we'll meet you. We'll meet you at North Cape. Yep, okay, all good. So we went up to North Cape, and Mike, he was fished a little bit longer for us out out kind of the three five five yeah. area, and then headed towards North Cape. But because he was in a boat rather than a ski, it was a bit choppy for the boat. So hmm. they stopped a bit short, and Will and I went to. Um, North Cape fish there, got some nice fish actually, we had a real good session of just catching nice fish after nice fish, nothing real massive but just real nice fish and then we started making our way back and we, we just found the conditions, it was one of those days, it was real weird, like the conditions went from rough hmm. to dead flat, dead flat calm, Yeah, like dead flat mirror calm and Until. We, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> and dead flat mirror calm and then um, and then it was flick the switch after that. It just eh? flicked the switch, and we could see it coming. So Will and I were fishing this um, this little school of trevally, and we were catching these trevally. You could see them in the in the swell. All these trevally, the school of trevally, having a wicked time. And we were just about to head to to Mike, who was probably I think we were at Henderson's at the time. Yeah, he was probably mm. seven or eight miles to the south of us. And we're like, right here, we'll go and get some. We'll go get some gas from Mike because he's mm. got the gas and the thing, and then we'll we'll get home. And in the meantime, though, the wind came up from the south, and this is why you should always kind of have a, a backup plan mm. and keep an eye on things. And because of where we were, the coverage wasn't very good. Mike couldn't get hold of us on the phone. Will and I were fishing, to be honest, and didn't hear the phone ringing. And uh, we could see these white caps coming up the coast. And by this time, it was 20 knots, 25 knots where Mike was. And we were fishing only 10 miles away in complete glass. Mm. So Mike headed off home with our gas, and we started heading off home, and Will had to be there. He'd only just started his new job at the Foursquare four four in Aurora. <laughs> so he was more concerned about getting there for that. And we started heading home, and I was like, Ooh, man. I rung Mike, and Mike said, oh, I'm back at the wharf. So I was like, Ooh, man, that is going to be You're real. getting a bit dry on it. That is going to be real, real tight on gas, and which, I mean, I was a bit... I was a bit concerned about that because normally I will always have a third reserve, but because I was had in the back of my mind, well, I've got this whole 25 litres of reserve. There's no dramas. And, uh, yeah, we started heading back and used the cruise control on used the cruise control on the Wave Runner, set the speed, set the throttle, watched the computer to see how much gas I was using. I knew exactly how much I had left and exactly how much I was using. And as we got into the harbour... It's fair to say we only just made it into the harbour. You did yourself a mischief. Did, did, yeah, Will and I did ourselves a mischief, and uh, we, we got into the harbour, we were all good, parked up, and then... Uh, the a, cavalry came. A, the a, minute, a minute from the ramp, the boys came and gave me a bit of gas so we could, we could get home. But that was, a, that was a real learning, actually, that we should all kind of take heed of, is don't rely on being able to get to your gas if you've got another boat, mm. unless you're with them the whole time, you know? That's, there's always the risk there that you're not going to be able to get it. So um, that was Australia. That was the far north. That was the trip with Will. So um, you definitely, we definitely did ourselves a big mischief. Well, the funniest thing actually was we we pulled into this into this beach, 
and we got off the ski and I was thinking, oh shit, Will's going to be late for, for work because we were about, we had about 20 minutes though, so he was still okay and he goes, he looks at me with his, kind of his wry smile and he goes, looks like we've done ourselves a mischief. <laughs> And I was like, yeah, you know what? You're right. That's exactly what's happened. So, yeah, so that that was, you know, just I one don't of even those think adventures. he went to work in the end that day. I think he ended up coming back up and caught up with us. Yeah, I don't think they needed him in the nah. end. After burning all that gas to get yeah. him home, he, we, we didn't need, didn't need to go, but, you know. <laughs> okay, so, uh, rightio. So let's just check quickly if there's any more questions. I've never thrown up doing live streaming. No, I mean, hopefully we don't throw up during one of these shows. No. Although it's possible, I suppose, but... Good barely, I suppose. Yeah, we'll see how we go. Yeah. But yeah, so uh, that's that's the highlights over and done with. There's more episodes than that. There's This is this show is going to go, this series is going to go for the next two months, every Thursday night, 8 o'clock, right here. Okay, so every Thursday night right here. Make sure you tune in. Make sure you tag people. Make sure you... Um, like the Jetfish TV page. Make sure you like the Jetfish TV Instagram page. Should we give away a prize? And let's give away. We'll give away a Yamaha hat to um, the someone who can tell me. So anyone who was listening to my last story, tell me what Will and I were fishing for just before it got rough. And Will, you're not allowed to answer this one, but we were fishing and we could see the fish in the swell. And uh, if you can tell me what it is that we were fishing for, then. I'll give you a I'll give you a Yamaha hat. So your live stream is a few seconds behind where we're at. So we'll just have a drink for a second. And uh, yeah, if you can tell me who it is, give so us a <laughs> give us a there we go. Yeah, Stephen Old. Yeah, big dogs. You're right. Will. we were fishing for big dogs. You're right. So uh, right, Stephen Old. If you can send me. Uh, send Jetfish TV a, um, a message. So you're going to have to make sure you like Jetfish TV and make sure you follow Jetfish TV on Instagram as well. Okay, and this is this is how it's going to work. We're going to be giving away two or three different prizes. We've got man, we've got heaps of shit, man. We've got braid, we've got pliers, we've got bloody pools. yeah, we've got soft baits. Mm -hmm. Paul's given us some soft baits, some ocean okay. angler soft baits. We've got t-shirts, we've got caps, we've got drink bottles. And that's before we even get to the to the major prize. Yeah, we could give away Mike's best squid spot, actually. That no. <laughs> Who was that? <laughs> that was Wayne. No, of course it was. Yeah. Yeah. But okay, so cool guys. So that's all we've got time for tonight. So make sure you tune in back here next week, 8 p.m., where we are going to be going live with the first ever, first ever Jetfish TV episode broadcast live. To you guys. I hope you've enjoyed tonight. We've certainly had a bit of fun. Yeah, Thanks, Mike, yes. for coming. It's been awesome. Thanks, guys, for for getting involved and, and for giving your questions and your comments. Make sure you get to Jetfish TV. Make sure you get to, to Instagram. And uh, we will see you guys same time, same place, next week. Looks like